It's my honor and privilege to introduce you to the Honorable Mayor Boyd Austin. I feel like some of you on director ought to walk down front and say, all right, please, and roll out after that. Uh, it is a great privilege to be here today. Thank you to Georgia Power. Thank you to the Chamber. Thank you for being Jay for our uh, lunch and sponsorship. And it has been a long time. Uh, a third of my life has been devoted in the service of this city, and I've seen a lot of changes uh, in those 17 years so far. And a lot of it has been exciting. Some of it has been uh, tiring. Uh, there was a time when we were all stressed about what we were going to do, how we were going to meet the growth patterns. And now we've had time to sit back and, and look and think and maybe uh, develop some different plans or segue into a different thought pattern. But I don't have the high-tech resources that the mayor Hiram has, so I'm just going to go through some points that I made uh, the first thing, and by the way, she's so nervous, she's still shaking over there. She's had a rosary in one hand and a stress ball in the other. <laughs> and, uh, but she did great, and she's done a great job since she took office. Uh, the most important thing to me in, in the city of Dallas, I think, is our continuity. Uh, I've been fortunate to be able to stand election and be elected five times. I hope that it represents people's confidence in my leadership. And the things that we've done could not have been accomplished without a great council. And uh, we've had a lot of continuity there. And we see we've had two new folks come on in the past year. I have with me today Jim Henson and Chris Carter, our two newest members of the council. If y'all will stand, please. And uh, <laughs> Kelly here. I don't know if you may not. Nancy Arnold is the other council member that's present with us today. Griffin White is out of town and Mike Casey uh, couldn't get off from work, but they are a great team. They are very supportive. And I think the thing that makes this mayor and council work so well is that we can discuss issues. We can have differences of opinion. Um, we can have different thought processes. But in the end, when we make a decision, we follow through with it. And I don't ever have to worry about a council member trying to upstage my position or the city manager's position or uh, try to step outside the box and uh, go off, go uh, differently from the course that the city's taken. And I appreciate that. I think it shows respect to the voters and respect for the city uh, itself that we can move forward in that fashion. Uh, we have a lot of employees in the city of Dallas who have been dedicated. Uh, Mike Wilkins just celebrated 25 years with the city of Dallas, and next month, my right-hand man, Kendall Smith, my city manager, Kendall, if you'll stand up, to celebrate 25 years with the city of Dallas. I think that speaks well about the way we treat our employees, and as Doris said, it's a team in Dallas, too, and we value each person. A lot of times, you know, you hear about government employees, you saw this teacher strike in Chicago. People get the wrong impression about public employees. But these are the men and women that get out and fix a busted sewer line or in the wintertime get in the ditch when the water line's broken and frozen. Uh, they have to deal with all of the, the problems that come up in the city. And they're valuable to us and we try our best to treat them fairly and treat them right. And I think it speaks in the amount of time that they have given the city of Dallas and their loyalty. Big thing with government to me is service <coughs> our people. Uh, touch briefly on the fact that we had a major disaster in March. Uh, a lot of homes in the city of Dallas were damaged. Some of it was uh, precluded by the coverage of the school. But I think the thing that speaks most about our city is that Within two weeks, we had the mess cleaned up and hauled off. It cost us $80,000 that we hadn't budgeted for. But I think we owed it to our people and the people of the county that came through here to see that we were going to move on and move forward. Uh, we had great response from community volunteers. My mayor pro tem, James Kelly, and his church particularly came into the city and did a lot of good work. Uh, we had uh, Hugh and Ned Rose. 
gray men, young birds who were older couples, World War II veterans that uh, really didn't know how they were going to react and how they were going to get help. And they came in in two days, cleaned up their yards, and a lot more people too. I see one of my neighbors up the street is a beneficiary of that kindness and selflessness from those people. Another thing we've done is we've instituted a call system using calling post to help um, eliminate some of the cutoffs and utilities. I know that everybody that deals with that knows what a hassle it is, both to go through it and then to turn things back on. So hopefully this calling system will reduce the number of cutoffs and it also gives us an ability to track those calls, to know when they were made and if they were received, if the numbers are good, and also to make them aware of other events that may be taking place or, or notices that they need to know. In the area of economic development, we were very proud to be a partner with Pauline County and the establishment of the Opportunity Zone. We already see the fruits of that state program uh, paying for itself and the creation of new businesses and the addition of jobs in the city of Dallas and in the unincorporated section of Pauline County where that Opportunity Zone has been established. We took a uh, defunct development over on West Memorial Drive, the Industrial Building Authority in Pauline County purchased the land. The Sheriff's Department, we used the back portion of it for a training facility, but the front portion has been turned into the West Dallas Industrial Park, and we already have our first tenant preparing to build a building and create a business there. It takes an old, defunct piece of property off of our books, it turns it into a tax paying entity. And it also takes advantage of those opportunity monetized tax credits. The, uh, and it's also related to the film industry. So it kind of ties together all the things that we've done in this, in this city and in this county. Like Doris, we've had movies filmed in the city of Dallas. We have a TV pilot film recently starring Nathan Lane using Main Street and the Dallas Theater. And we will continue to seek those opportunities as they uh, provide us additional recognition. And we hope that Georgia, I would encourage our uh, state legislators to keep those tax credits in place. Other states are trying to become as competitive. And we have a huge investment in this county in the Atlanta Film Studios, as well as in the other opportunities and the businesses that are located here. And we must maintain our competitive edge in that area. We are in the process of beginning our third phase of our Livable, Civ Livable Centers Initiative Program. You'll hear it here referred to as LCI. Uh, this is the moniker for the Live, Work, Play communities. You have seen the results of it on Main Street and the streetscape there. The second phase was the trailhead, the Civil War Memorial Trailhead <coughs> Park. And the third phase will be a renovation of South Johnston Street and improvements to East Griffin, Spring, and Park Streets. Um, all of this is designed to be prepared for the growth that we think will come in the future years. One time we were criticized for not reacting fast enough to growth in this county, and now a lot of people say, well, you're spending money, and what are you doing this for? Well, the LCI projects, the gateway signs that Hiram's doing, we have our own version of the gateway sign that will be uh, built in four places. All of that's designed to create a sense of community and to be an attraction to people who come. We've got a, a central downtown area. We need to enhance it. It's what draws people in. A recent statewide study showed that downtowns are the economic generators for the state, whether it's a small town or a big city. And you will see in the coming months in the General Assembly some action to provide some tax credits for downtown development and to ensure that Georgia keeps moving forward. We also have let the contract on the first phase of the sewer line extension to the airport. That provides the necessary infrastructure for development at the airport and the industrial park, but it also opens up the whole uh, western side of Dallas, the unincorporated part of Dallas, for future development, both residential and commercial. So that is a big plus to us and it provides a necessary service. And we also have left the, uh, the contract for our new sewer treatment plant design. And if you've been through downtown lately, 
you've seen that we have a lot of streets torn up, a lot of things displaced. We are replacing water mains on Memorial and Confederate and, and other parts of town. And the gas company decided to come through about the same time and play, replace the gas main. So hopefully, when this is finished, we'll be able to get back to normal. In our public works department for streets, roads, and sidewalks, we had the completion of Dallas Connect and sidewalk system to the Silver Diamond Trail and the Civil War Memorial Trailhead Park. We are exploring the opportunity to build a pedestrian bridge over the railroad and connect downtown through the Elizabeth McCoon Memorial Park to Chattahoochee Tech in our retail center at the Highway 61 and 278 intersection. That also connects to the Silver Common Trail at another point of the trailhead of the chain. We have plans for reconfiguring Confederate Avenue. Confederate Avenue is a state highway, 61 North. It is, one, it is our only historic district that's on the state highway system. It is where I live and others, and it is hard to get in and out, and the traffic uh, volume is uh, almost un unbearable sometimes, and we have plans to narrow the street, to slow the traffic, to provide for greater pedestrian safety, and encourage people to be out on the sidewalks walking. Part of that is the connection between the end of the sidewalk presently <coughs> Cooper Place to the Atchison Park subdivision. We have used lost money in some of our subdivisions that were uh, built, but not built to the specific uh, percentage that required sidewalks and things to be done so we've gone back in at Atchison Park, Cooper Place and other places and built those connecting sidewalk sections to give those homeowners a complete section within their subdivisions so that they can reach the city system and move about the city. We will be using some of that money that's part of the other part that we were unprepared for was normally we'd build a, a subdivision or allow a developer to build a subdivision put in their base layer of pavement when they got to 60 or 70 percent complete they come back in and do the, the final top coat well unfortunately when the economic downturn happened a lot of those uh, went bankrupt or left and the streets were never finished and it is a problem for us for Hiram for Paulding County and for every other local government uh, in Metro Atlanta in particular and we'll be using some funds. We've got a proposed plan over the next three years to uh, resurface those streets or to provide the final services.